Color mixing is intimidating. It can feel like trying to learn calculus or chemistry. But if I can make it accessible for you, it can open up the ability for you to get into new types of art supplies, new materials for minimal cost. It is extremely satisfying when you learn color mixing, even just the basics. You feel like your art supplies are just opened up to you in a whole new way. And that's my goal for this video. Beginner Color Mixing 101. So stick around. If we're learning color mixing, there are a few things that we're going to need. Now, if you watch my videos, you know that I'm a big advocate of a fancy sketchbook and a cheap sketchbook. And the fancy one is where I try to make final pieces. Certainly for this channel, I put my real work in here, you know, <laughs> the stuff that you get to see in videos. And in my cheap sketchbook is the stuff that's just for me, doodling, playing with markers, wasting paint. I don't have any pressure in my cheap sketchbook. But there's an even cheaper sketchbook. <laughs> and that's what I use for pure learning. And that's what I recommend you get for yourself. Something super cheap that you don't even necessarily like how it looks. Like I don't actually like the look of this sketchbook at all. And that helped. That's what I used to learn. And I take notes in here and I do practice color charts in here. I took Tio Yi Chi's color mixing course in here. The other thing I like to have around is just scrap paper. This is watercolor paper that had been ripped and wasn't really great for making any kind of a final piece on but I leave those kinds of extra sheets on my desk to test colors when I'm painting. So that's another thing that you can use that is super low pressure for doing this kind of art learning. So just get something that you couldn't care less about. Honestly, you could use printer paper. If you're using watercolor paper, you get a better sense of what it'll really look like. That's the first and most important material. But the other material is gonna be whatever you're gonna wanna test. I'm personally going to use flash paint because I got a mixing set of flash paint to try when I first got it. And this is really the point of this video. This is the usefulness of this to you. Aside from just kind of understanding better and feeling like you're a part of the club that knows how to color mix, it's so cool. I know that's how I felt kind of on the outside of the club that knew how to color mix before I started learning this stuff. I want you to feel on the inside because you are. And the other reason is because you can get three paints, but you can't mix white. So at the very least, you need a mixing blue, mixing red, mixing yellow, and a white. If you want to really do everything. If you want it to be even more convenient, you can have a pre-mixed black, but you don't need it the way you need the other four. So really with four bottles, tubes, cans, whatever you want to do, you can mix any color of the rainbow. And that is the beauty and the magic of color mixing. And that's what I want to teach you today. So one of the things that sparked this is people see me making these little color wheels anytime I either get a new supply or start a new sketchbook. This is the Stillman and Burn beta series sketchbook with 270 GSM watercolor paper. And that's one of my stickers from Redbubble. That's my own art. And I think it just looks really pretty on this sketchbook. But when I did the first page of this with you all, you saw me making my little color wheels and I got some questions then. But then most recently, I did another painting with my Holbein paints that I had just got. And I did this color wheel for you on the video. And I got even more questions about this color wheel. And how did I do it? And what was I doing? And what was even happening? So that's what we're going to go over today, too. I'm going to teach you how to do that. And the reason I do it is that's the best way for me to learn new materials. Okay, first things first, we have to understand primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. Primary colors are just from school. So you got your red, you got your blue, you got your yellow. And that's why red, blue, and yellow are the only colors I'm talking about as your kind of bare minimum mixing palette. Secondary colors are orange, green, and purple. It's what you get when you mix two of the three primary colors. Tertiary colors are sort of more refined versions of secondary colors. Just a fancy way of saying instead of just orange, red orange. Instead of just green, yellowy green. That's when we're getting more refined with how fancy we're getting with how we say purple or orange or green. If we're saying lime green, that's a tertiary color. So that's all tertiary means. It's the colors in between the primaries 
that aren't just secondary, they're secondary colors that lean even more towards one of the primaries. And that's what I'm doing when I make my color charts. I'm trying to get all the tertiary colors. So what I do, and we're gonna do this together, I take the yellow, the red, and the blue, and I put it in a triangle every time. Red, yellow, blue, in a triangle, okay? That's always where I put them. And then I do the mixes in between. This one has a little more yellow than red. This one has a little more red than yellow. The primary it's closer to is the one it's primarily made up of. This purple's a little more blue than red. This purple's a little more red than blue. Same thing here. A little more yellowy orange, a little more reddy orange. A little more reddy purple, a little more bluey purple. A little more bluey green, a little more yellowy green. Now this is the part that always really confused me. There's such a thing as a cool yellow and a warm yellow. A cool red and a warm red. <laughs> a cool blue and a warm blue. And basically it's, if you look at a yellow, you can think to yourself, is this more of a bluey yellow or a reddy yellow? If it's more red, it's warm. If it's more blue, it's cool. With blue, you can ask yourself, is this more of a yellow blue or a red blue? And if it's more yellow, it's cool. If it's more red, it's warm. Same thing with red. Is this a more yellowy red or a more bluey red? If it's more yellow, it's warm. If it's more blue, it's cool. And what you want, this is where it gets real confusing. You want a cool yellow and a cool blue to mix a real good green. You want a warm yellow and a warm red to mix a real good orange. But you want a cool red and a warm blue to mix a beautiful purple. You can mix a purple with cool cool or warm warm with the red and the blue but it won't be as gorgeous because if you get warm, cool wrong, you get mud. If you took a screenshot of this, you'd have a huge amount of color mixing if you understood this. This is the part that took me for frickin' ever to understand. And it was separating out my preconceived notions of how I felt about colors that made this a lot easier to kind of digest and incorporate into my brain. So if this is hard for you to kind of get just this simple picture here, I'm with you. I'm with you. Took a lot of books, a lot of notes. All these notes are basically about this issue. <laughs> so here's a bigger, more detailed color wheel. This one really helped me understand it a little bit better. I actually laid it out here for you too. So this might be even easier. So there's a warm yellow and a cool yellow. Here's an example. Lemon yellow is generally going to be a cool yellow but cadmium or yellow deep, when it looks a little more reddish, tinged with red versus tinged with blue, that's how you know, warm, cool. I've got my warm on one side and my cool on the other side. And that's all this is saying. Same goes for the blues, right? I've got a cool blue, this is sky blue, cyan blue are all examples. And then I've got a warm blue. A better blue would have been ultramarine, but in Turner, I just have the Prussian blue. And for reds, same thing. You can have a warm red, which is gonna be like your scarlets. This is a permanent red. It is a yellowy red. But then I also have my cool red, which is a pinky red. Carmine is a good example. Rose matter, rose matter deep. Those are good examples. And you've got your warm red on one side and your cool red on the other side. So that's all these are doing. It's called a split primaries palette. You could get a split primaries palette. So you know how we talked about how you can just get a primaries palette. Well, if you got a split primaries, you wouldn't have these very basic middle of the road colors. You would have two yellows, two reds, two blues, a warm and cool of each. And with that, you get that. Every color you can flip and imagine. And if you add a little white, it's a tint. If you add a little black, it's a shade. So you can make this into like a, you can make this actually into like a really beautiful pale mint. You can make this into a really pastel lavender. You, you know, you get what I'm saying. This could be a little pale sherbet color, or you can make them extremely dark by mixing in some black. Lip primaries is the whole shebang when it comes to color mixing. If you mix a cool yellow, which is a bluish yellow, with a cool blue, which is a yellowish blue, then you get clean greens that are not muddy because there's no element of red at all. Do you ever mix colors and you don't get these bright, vibrant colors, you get mud? That happens when you have elements of all three primaries in a secondary mix. So you have to make sure your secondary mixes don't have elements of all three. And that's why cool and warm matters. Why can't you just mix any yellow 
with any red, with any blue, and get your secondary colors. Like, what is all this mess about? And the mess is that if you mix all three primaries, red, blue, and yellow, you get mud. You actually get black if you mix them enough. And when you have a cool yellow, which is a bluish yellow, and a warm red, which is a yellowish red, I just said blue, yellow, and red, right? There are elements of all three. So even though you're only using two primaries, if a primary leans towards the wrong other primary, you end up with all three primaries in a mix and you get this mud right here that I'm making in the middle when I mix all three. So this one here is lemon yellow, quinacridone rose, and manganese blue hue. So it's all cool colors. And if I mix all three, I get mud. And that's the same if you mix all three of all warm, all cool, it doesn't matter. All three make mud. And when you're going to mix two primaries, you're not trying to mix all three primaries. You're just trying to mix two primaries to get one secondary color, like a nice green or a nice orange or a nice purple. If you are saying bluish this, reddish that, yellowish this, if the word blue, yellow, and red all come in, the words, <laughs> then you're going to get this mud that I'm making in the middle here. And it's kind of mind-blowing to think that you can have just two colors, but there are elements of all three, and then you stumble into mud. But that's how you're stumbling into mud. So that was a cool one. Let's do a warm one. This is ultramarine blue. That is a warm blue. And then we're going to do pyrrole scarlet for the red, and we'll do the new gamboge for the yellow. That is my warm yellow. So that's also a color wheel with yellow, red, and blue. They're just all warm. And then let's see what we can get in the middle if we try to make a mixture of all three. The warm colors tend to make a darker black for me. Anything with pyrrole scarlet is going to make a much darker black for me. See? <laughs> so this is almost like a Payne's gray color, but the point is neutrals. When there's any mix of all three primaries, you get some kind of a neutral. So let's mix up our secondary colors. I'm going to mix the cool color wheel first. So cool yellow, which is a bluish yellow, and cool red, which is a bluish red, right there. I've said it, right? Bluish yellow, bluish red. I've said blue, yellow, and red. You're going to get a little bit of a muddy orange. You're not going to have that when you mix orange in the warms because warm yellow is reddish yellow. Warm red is yellow red. Yellow, red, orange, red. I haven't said blue. It's going to be a nice, clean, crisp orange. I love that combo for orange. It's beautiful. And that's a more crisp orange than that sort of, it's like a muddy orange. So let's make a purple now. So we I always thought purple was the confusing one because green is easy. Cool, cool, green. Orange is easy. Warm, warm, orange. But purple, you're supposed to have a cool red, like quinacridone rose, and a warm blue, like ultramarine blue. And it makes sense if you think about it, because a cool red is a bluish red. A warm blue is a reddish blue. Red, blue, red, blue. I haven't said yellow. You're not going to get mud. So it's literally, if you just say it to yourself that way, that's how I learned it. I didn't say cool yellow, cool blue. Red. I would say yellowish blue reddish blue. It helps me because then you hear the words out loud, you know you can avoid mud. I explained it to one of you guys commenting um, that it's like counting out math using your fingers. That's how I do it. I count out my color wheel and my color mixing using my fingers and that's how I do it. Now look what happens. I'm going to do it over here. If I do the warm blue instead of the cool blue with the cool red instead of the warm red what kind of purple I get here. Oh my God. I love this purple. This purple is actually called Rose of Ultramarine and um, Daniel Smith sells it on its own because it's so beautiful as a purple. I don't know about you. That's my favorite purple of the three. That one's pretty good too, but that one's the least, the, my least favorite is the double warm, double cool and warm cool for purple are better. Double cool are better for green, double warm are better, better for orange. So that's what that first thing I showed you meant. Muddy, muddy green. See the difference? When you use the cool plus cool, you get this crisp, clean green. When you use a warm and a warm, you get this muddy green. You can just memorize <laughs> cool plus, plus cool for green, warm plus warm for orange, mix them up for purple. 
you're there. You pretty much can do anything. And the fact that mixing a bunch of different ones across the color wheel gets you these neutrals. Now, what do I mean by across the color wheel? So this is a super basic color wheel now. The primaries, primary is yellow, primary, red, primary, blue. Same here, primary, primary, primary. But we also have secondary colors, orange, green, and purple. We've got the primary triangle, and we've got the, that's gonna be funny, secondary tri triangle that's still wet and you're seeing some ink bleeds. You know I love ink bleeds, I don't mind. Again, cheap to play study sketchbook. That's why I love a study sketchbook where you don't, you literally couldn't care less. No one's gonna see this. I mean, everyone's gonna see this for me, but no one's gonna see it for you, so don't worry about it. <laughs> so colors across the color wheel are complementary colors and they look real good together. That's why red and green for Christmas, blue and orange is a color scheme you'll see all the time. I'm thinking Broncos because I'm in Colorado. Yellow and purple, SUNY Albany comes to mind. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's from New York. <laughs> These are major color schemes that you'll start to notice if you know that those are called complementary colors, colors across the wheel. Now, the thing about mixing colors, if you mix, now that you totally understand that with three colors you can you can create your, your secondary colors and tertiary colors just from having primaries. But what happens if you mix colors across the color wheel? Well, it's real interesting. <laughs> so you know that mixing all three primaries gets you mud, so maybe you can guess, but here's a lemon yellow. And let's mix it with purple. I actually have ultramarine purple right here. I'm gonna save myself some time with the convenience of it all, but now you know how to mix purple, all different kinds, so this won't be a huge shock to you when you see that if you mix yellow and purple, you get something that looks a lot like black, at least gray or brown, and that's true. That's exactly what you're gonna get. When you mix colors across the wheel, you get neutrals or some version of mud, but that can be real fun. I mean, it can be really fun. You can want something like that. I know I often do. You don't always want these like super bright primary colors. So that's an example of purple and yellow. Let's do orange and blue. Muddy green. Let's do red and green. And actually red and green is one of my absolute favorite ways to make a brown. So this is my jadeite. It's a beautiful green. I love that green. Premixed convenience green. And let's take this pyrrole. And let's see. See that pyrrole is so strong. It's starting to look like brown, but I need to add a lot more green to get the brown. But red and green always make a nice brown for me. How do I mix my favorite neutrals? That's one. Any kind of a red, here's, here's the pinky red. And green, here let's do like a lime green. Let's see what kind of a brown we get. We'll get you some kind of a brown. I use this a lot when I forget to include convenience browns <laughs> in my palettes, but I never forget red and green. So that helps me get my browns if I forgot to include them. And because I'm using pre-mixed colors, there's all kinds of other stuff in these colors. That's the issue. If you're using pure, like let's say I wanted to do that, but I didn't wanna take the shortcut. Okay, how do we wanna mix green? Green is cool and cool. So let me get my yellow, my lemon yellow for cool yellow, my cyan blue for cool blue. There's my beautiful bright green. And then I want red mixed in. So I can take warm red, mix it in to my mixed color that I just mixed. And again, I might have to kind of keep taking it up to get to the exact brown I want, but the brown will be in there. That's where it's gonna end up. Because it has to, because they're across the wheel from each other and there she is, look at that brown. So cool. So you obviously you can use your convenience colors to mix, but you can also get all of this from three colors. <laughs> Um, depending on which three you decide to put in your palette. So I like a split primaries at least. I mean, you know me, I like a convenience, <laughs> a whole universe of convenience stuff, but I do like to be able to mix. Like when I made this gouache palette, I didn't think about brown for some unknown reason. I was so busy thinking about green that I didn't think about brown. I, I saw this, I was like, oh yeah, brown, no. So <laughs> this is all I had for my gouache palette originally. 
and I made a couple of guinea pigs and I was like, I don't have any brown. These are like all brown. So I just mixed different greens with this primary red. I would mix the olive green with the primary red, beautiful brown. And it's only because I understand that red and green are opposite on the color wheel and that's gonna get me some kind of mud and mud is brown that I knew to do that. That's the usefulness of this is sometimes your palette just doesn't have every single color and you kind of want to understand why. How do I get brown? How does brown, how is it even a thing? It's a thing because colors opposite the color wheel get you mud. But this is a classic and this was a huge trick I learned, like huge. It seems like everybody uses this and once I learned it, I felt so in the know. But any kind of like a burnt sienna, this one is quinacridone sienna. And if you mix that, with ultramarine blue. I'm actually gonna just do that so you can see how beautiful. You get this gorgeous gray. That is my favorite way to mix gray. You don't need Payne's gray in your palette if you have quinacridone sienna or burnt sienna and ultramarine. And you can have it go more of a brownie gray if you add more of the orangey color. You can have it go more of a blue gray if you add more of the ultramarine. And because it's ultramarine, it's going to granulate and just be stunning. So that is a huge jump ahead for you. If you just have what we just went over, you know the primaries, you know the secondaries, you know that you want a cool and a cool for a green, you want a warm and a warm for a red, you want to mix them for the best purple, do mixing across the color wheel or all three primaries. You're going to get mud, neutrals. You can experiment, play, see what you can get out of your palette. So that's a watercolor example. All right. So as you can see, I've made an extremely wonky color wheel format. <laughs> I think it's important for you to see the real deal. <laughs> this is the reality, not the pretty aesthetic, Pinterestable. This is just where I want you to really get super comfortable. And even stuff like that, I feel like maybe that'll make you more comfortable. But here's what it's going to be. Yellow, red, blue, green, purple, orange. I just put the initial for everything to keep us on track. The first thing I do is I just fill in the red. When I'm doing mine, I don't have these circles. I just do it like free form on the paper, but I thought this might be helpful for you. Again, I'm not remotely trying to make this pretty. I want it to be really real. A lot of blue with a little red for the blue purple. That's why it says BP. That's the tertiary color blue purple. A little more red with a little less blue for straight up purple. Now, hopefully you'll be able to see from what we just did that this is less friendly to mixing because it's just three basic colors. There's no, it's not a split primary. So you're not going to get the gorgeous, clean, crisp colors that you would get with one of those types of palettes. If you had a split primaries palette made for mixing exactly the most beautiful version of colors, like these purples aren't really beautiful purples, but what we can do is mix a little white. Oh, that's a lot of white. Oops. <laughs> so I can mix some of that white with this purple and get a tint of purple. And that's a pretty color. A little bit of a different shade of purple. If I mixed in even more blue, an even more different shade. Well, and tint, my apologies, tint of purple. A little more red closer to the real red and less red closer to the yellow. And now I'm gonna take the yellow, my primary, in with the plain orange, in with the red orange. That tends to get the right amount of yellow and red. So that's a lot of yellow, less yellow, even less yellow, a lot of blue. Trying to do better with the water, that's what went wrong there, <laughs> was my brush was just too wet. But we'll see if I can figure it out this time. Now that we have our primary, our secondary, and our tertiary colors, let's do a little bit more of playing with that white. White and see what we can get. So that's how tinting works, just literally adding white. 
<laughs> to your colors. Now let's do a nice mix of all three and get some mud. That blue is so strong with the red that the yellow doesn't really get a moment <laughs> in the sun to like even do anything. Okay, that actually, I can see that that's a brown, but for you to see it, we might have to mix it with, yep, mix it with some white. And then we have blue and yellow, which are across from each other on the color wheel. But that blue is just so strong. I don't think it's going to do much of anything. Yeah, it just looks like blue, like a neutral, what they call a neutralized blue. So this is the regular blue. That's the pastel blue. That's a neutralized blue. It is a very pretty color. But that's what they mean when someone says neutralize that color. That, that means this is, you know, a straight up primary blue. That's a little much. I want to neutralize it. Okay, you take some mud. It's neutralized. That's literally what it means to neutralize a color is mixing it with something I usually do opposite the color wheel. But if you have mud, it has all the colors in the color wheel, which necessarily includes the color opposite. So that gets you a nice neutralized color. Here's the problem is these aren't split primary. So now I want to show you what it would look like with a split primary. And this is muddy because all of these flash paints are warm. There's no cool colors. So of course, like the second watercolor one that we did, it's all gonna be muddy. Last but not least, we're gonna do an actual split primaries palette. And I've already shown you these paints. So I'll probably speed through this, but what we're doing is warm yellow, cool yellow, warm blue, cool blue, warm red, cool red. You can see how much more vibrant the split primary colors are versus, you know, the wonky wheel. <laughs> let's see what some of the mixing everything together would do. So let's look at red and green. Oh, a really nice brown. That's a really nice brown with red and green, as expected. And let's see what we can get with blue and orange, knowing that I'm hoping for a nice gray. Yep, a nice sort of Payne's grayish. And then let's look at yellow and purple. See what kind of neutral we get. Beautiful. Ooh, <laughs> it's a beautiful neutral. Okay, cool. So, I mean, and again, we can mix all three primaries together. Let's see. We can't get something that looks pretty close to black. Yep. A pretty, a very dark neutral. So now do you see why I love a nice... Oh, wow, that was completely out of frame. <laughs> ah, I'm so sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> well, so, I mean, you can probably guess, but... That was the mix of red and green. That was the mix of purple, of orange and blue. That was the mix of purple and yellow. So those are the three neutrals. And then that's the pretty close to black of mixing all three primaries. So that's a split primaries palette. I would most recommend that you get a warm and cool yellow. Warm yellow with warm red will mix these oranges. You get a warm and a cool red. Cool red with warm blue will mix these purples. You get a warm blue to mix with the cool red and a cool blue to mix with the cool yellow. You get these beautiful greens. You can mix all your neutrals, add white to something. It's going to be a pretty tint. Add, where did I mix that black? Add black to something. You can imagine it darkens it up. So that split primaries, a tube of white and a warm and cool of each of your primaries is how you mix every color in the rainbow. I really hope that this was helpful to you. If it was, please remember to leave a like on this video. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you are new and leave me a comment with what you found the most helpful about today's video. I really appreciate you sticking around for a long one. I hope you learned a ton. I can't wait to hear from you and hang out in the comments. Until next time, remember, create something cute.